So this uh, last presentation will be about variant annotation. Uh, so as you have seen, and as you probably know, um, if you do variant analysis, uh, then you will probably find really a lot of uh, variants. But out of these variants, you want to, of course, extract uh, the most important uh, variant. And typically, the most important variants are variants that have an effect on, for example, the amino acid sequence of a, a, uh, a protein. Um, because that later on can have an effect on the phenotype. Um, <clears throat> so um, when, when you do that, uh, then you are doing something that is called functional annotation. So um, that would be uh, variants that are relative to uh, genomic features, and often those genomic features are, are genes. Um, so variants with big effects on those genes are either in uh, coding regions or uh, in promoter regions, because those kind of um, regions are important uh, for the protein. Uh, less important are, for example, variants in intronic regions, because uh, they will not be uh, translated into amino acid sequence, and the same counts for untranslated regions. Um, even potentially less interesting, but yeah, it very much depends, of course, are intergenic uh, variants, uh, uh, especially if they're, if you cannot associate them with a, a gene at all. So these uh, coding uh, variants, um, they can have different uh, effects on the amino acid sequence. Um, so as you know, um, a uh, amino acid um, is uh, translated from a, a triplet in, in the coding sequence. So if you have a um, mutation in the in the coding sequence, it can have an effect on the amino acid, but not always. So for example, um, if we are uh, talking about a synonymous uh, mutation, typically it doesn't have an effect at all at uh, amino acid sequence, for example, AGA, is translated into arginine, while ATG is translated into arginine as well. So probably this mutation, if the A is mutated into AG, probably doesn't have a big effect on, on the phenotype. Uh, however, um, you can, of course, have a single point mutation, which can have a bit, an effect on um, the amino acid sequence. For example, in this case, when we have an AAT triplet, uh, that becomes an AAA uh, triplet. So uh, I think it's asperger gene uh, becomes a lysine. lysine. Uh, then, of course, the amino acid will change, and that can have an effect on the protein structure and therefore potentially on the phenotype. It becomes uh, even, uh, you can even get a larger effect when um, you uh, gain a stop codon. For example, over here, this triplet. Uh, would be translated TTT into a cysteine, but if that T uh, mutates into an A, then it becomes a stop codon, and then you get a truncated protein. That means that uh, the, the protein uh, stops uh, prematurely, and therefore probably it can have a very big effect on uh, how the protein can do its job. Also, a big effect on uh, an amino acid sequence are frame shifts. For example, if you have a single insertion or a deletion, uh, then uh, the, the, uh, we get an, uh, an out of uh, frame uh, tra translation. So you get completely, a completely different amino acid sequence resulting from the, from the translation, typically also resulting in, in trun truncated uh, proteins. Um, so these can also have a very big effect uh, on the protein itself. Um, so many things uh, can happen, and it is always nice to be able to uh, describe these uh, different uh, type of uh, effects um, in a standardized way. And in order to do that, uh, we typically use the sequence uh, ontology um that um is a, a a set of ontologies uh in a um uh, a layered fashion um that can help you uh, or help software to describe particular variants 
So it, it describes both the terms, so it also its definition and their relationships. So for example, if we have a coding sequence uh, variant, it could be, uh, for example, a protein altering variant um, or a synon synonymous variant or a terminated codon variant. And uh, all of those uh, different terms, they have a definition. And that, that, that definition we just discussed, right? Um, if you think about proteins, um, it's also important to uh, consider isoforms because as you probably know, um, one uh, gene can have different isoforms resulting into different proteins. It also means that one uh, variant might be a, a protein altering variant in one isoform, but not in the other isoform, just because that exon is not part of that, uh, that transcript. Um, so how uh, should we do that in terms of, of uh, uh, bioinformatics, right? Because we want to get a complete report and if you uh, and we want to find variants that have a big effect. So which isoforms should we choose uh, to um, um, report the, the variant effect? So um, there are multiple ways to do that. Um, typically, uh, the effects of all isoforms are uh, reported, at least all isoforms that have an axon in that region. Uh, but sometimes if you are only interested in uh, you know, a bit of an overview of, uh, of uh, what's possible, uh, you can choose to only report, uh, for example, the effect with the largest impact. Uh, so uh, you focus on the isoform where the um, mutation had the largest impact on the amino acid sequence, or you focus on the most relevant uh, transcript, and the most relevant transcripts are typically the transcripts or the isoforms that are most highly expressed. So there are definitely tools to do uh, such functional annotation. Of course, in, a, in addition to a reference genome, you also uh, need a functional annotation of that genome, meaning that you need uh, to have uh, the positions on where the genes and the axons and the introns are. Um, so, um, well, I here I give three examples. I think one of the uh, most frequently used ones is, is FEP, Parent Effect Predictor from Ensemble. It both has a web interface where you can just upload a VCF and you get the an annotated uh, VCF back, or you can use the command line tool that uh, interacts with uh, the, the FEP uh, API. Then there's ANOVAR, um, also relatively frequently uh, used. I must admit I've never uh, used it myself, but it's, uh, it is used by, by many people. And then there is uh, SNPF. SNPF is a tool that we will also use in the exercises. The big advantage of SNPF is that it supports really a lot of uh, different genomes and the database is, is growing. And you can even um, uh, add uh, make a database of your own uh, genome, so your own annotated genome and uh, GTF and um, let uh, SNPF make a database out of it and then you can also use it for, for variant annotation. Um, so, um, people, um, have, uh, taken this a step further, um, because what, uh, what, what people have noticed and what you probably also noticed if you are doing a variant, uh, effect prediction is that, um, you can have, uh, a high impact, uh, mutation, for example, an amino acid chain that might have a very big effect on protein structure, but on other amino acid chains has only a minor effect on the protein structure because it's at the at the sides or at the inside of a, a protein 3D structure. So then um, people want to take that to a, a higher level. And what you can, for example, do is um, that you look for um, uh, variants that are highly conserved in many species. So if you find a variant that is uh, usually of, of a, a, um, uh, that um, changes amino acid that is highly conserved in many uh, species, then you probably have 
found a variant with a very with a relatively big effect because uh, it's probably important to keep it that way. Then you can also look uh, on in protein structure and biochemistry. Uh, you can imagine that alpha fold uh, might have had a, or has had a pretty big effect on that because with alpha fold you can exactly um, uh, predict the effect uh, one mutation uh, has had on the protein structure. Um, and also people have been using uh, expression uh, QTLs in order to see whether a certain variant has a big uh, effect on uh, expression of many genes. Uh, there are quite a few databases uh, available. Uh, examples of that is a DBNSFP and a mutation cluster or mutation data. Mutation data. 